this is why they call me Miss Petty. And this is also why you should never let your boyfriend have a girl best friend. Let's get right into it. So my boyfriend had this girl best friend who he was friends with for like two months before he met me. So yeah, not a very long time. Over the course of those two months, she had bought him $5,000 worth of stuff. That's a little too nice for a best friend for me. But my boyfriend told me to trust him and that they were just friends. I should try and talk to her and shit, maybe me and her could even become friends. So me and her actually did hang out one day. It was me, her, and my boyfriend and we were all drinking. My boyfriend passed out a little early, so it was only me and her awake. I was getting really tipsy and I ended up throwing up all over myself. My boyfriend's girl best friend laid my head back on the sink and started washing my hair. And I was like, oh my gosh, what if I spoke too soon about her? What if she's actually not that bad? And she was washing my hair so nice, I felt smooth and silky. A little too smooth and silky. Well, I woke up the next morning to notice that my boyfriend's best friend is gone. And when I went to the bathroom and looked in the mirror, I was completely bald. Part two of why they call me Miss Petty. So like I said, when I woke up, my boyfriend's best friend wasn't there. And when I looked in the mirror, I was completely bald. So I woke up my boyfriend and he's shocked. He's like, what the fuck did you do? And I was like, what the fuck did I do? I know his best friend did this. When I texted her number, the messages weren't going through. And when I checked her socials, I was blocked on everything. I made my boyfriend DM her on Insta, but we watched her Instagram story and there were so many pictures of me bald while I was asleep. At this point, I was literally bawling my eyes out. My long, luscious hair was gone. I even called my mom. Mind you, we were all in college. So yeah, like I said, I was bawling. I was honestly ready to give up on life right then and there. I was regretting even going to college. I'm just kidding, stay in school, kids. But those tears ain't last for long, child. Mm -mm. I was gonna get my sweet revenge. So little old me made a sugar daddy pay. I did some follow for follow so I could get some followers so it could look legit. And I posted some pictures of an old man I found on Facebook. Then I DM'd her and asked her if she wanted to be my sugar baby. And she said yes. This is where the fun begins, like for part three. This is part three of why they call me Miss Petty. So I made a fake sugar daddy page and DM'd my boyfriend's girl best friend and asked her if she wanted to be my sugar baby. And she said yes. You want to know why she said yes? Well, 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 that $5,000 worth of stuff she bought for my boyfriend came in handy. A week had passed since she posted all those pictures of me bald while sleeping. Oh, by the way, she saw Nair in the bathroom and used that to wash my hair. Well, a week passed and over that week, I sold all the stuff she bought for my boyfriend. I actually ended up getting like 6k back. So basically, I told her I would pay her $1,000 a week in exchange for some sexy pics. And I sent her $700 right there so she thought it wasn't fake. Bitch didn't even know she was getting her own money back. Eh. So I sent her $1,000 a week for five weeks in exchange for pictures. Well, once all the money ran out, it was time for revenge. I gathered up all the pictures that she sent me, made a fake page pretending to be her, and sent the pictures to her parents, her job, the school, and to multiple girls' boyfriends on Instagram with the text, break up with your girlfriend because I'm bored, but shh, don't tell anyone. Like for part four. This is part four of why they call me Miss Petty. So after I catfished my boyfriend's girl best friend and posted her nudes everywhere and sent them to a lot of girls' boyfriends, Boyfriend. obviously she was getting so much backlash and everybody was posting about it and everybody was coming at her so many people wanted to beat her ass it was hilarious she kept trying to say no it's not me behind the fake page but nobody believed her she had to go completely ghost on social media Lit too did everybody know i was the mastermind behind the whole thing she didn't show up to school for like a week or so but then the day that she came back I'm not exactly sure why she came back, but she got jumped by five girls. But not only did she get jumped, they threw her in the trash can. I almost felt bad until I remembered how long and luscious my hair used to be. Let this be a reminder to everybody to just stay in your lane. Eventually, she dropped out of that college and I'm guessing she went to some other college, but everybody hated her there, so she had to move. Damn, karma really is a bitch and so is your mama. Story time of how two girls at my school were pregnant by the same guy. Let's get into it. So there was this one girl that went to my school, let's call her Nami. Nami was the definition of problematic, she beat up everybody. She talked the most shit because she knew she could back it up. But yeah, my good sis Nami, she wasn't strong, she was strong. Another thing about her is that she was the plug for everything. She had chargers, she had food, she had... She was the plug for everybody. There was this one really popular boy at our school. He was like the finest boy at our school. Now mind you, Nami was not that cute. But he started messing with Nami and everybody knew that he was playing her. She swore up and down that everybody was just mad. That everybody was just a hater. He was a player and a heartbreaker child. We knew what was up. Well, rumors started going around that Nami was pregnant. But she never confirmed it until she got word that that popular guy that she was messing with was messing with another girl. Well, rumors started going around that that girl was pregnant too. Nami was not having it. She took it upon herself to start going off on her Instagram story. Started 
started posting receipts. And I have some of these posts on my Instagram story, so make sure to go check it out. In one post, she confirmed that she was pregnant. She also said she was gonna beat up that girl the next day. They had to call the ambulance, y'all like for part two? Part two of how two girls at my school were pregnant by the same guy. Let's jump right into it. So like I said, Nami was going off on her Instagram story, confirmed that she was pregnant, some more of the receipts on my instagram story so make sure to go check it out she said that she was gonna beat up that other girl that her man was messing with the next day the next day came babes it came baby i was just walking to second period and i see nami i see nami drop her shit and start swinging she's going crazy when i tell y'all this girl can fight well the other girl got beat up pretty bad and they had to call an ambulance multiple ambulances and apparently that girl was pregnant but she ended up losing her baby in the fight I do have the video of this fight i can't post it because i don't want nami to come for me but also because it's graphic because the other girl lost her baby during that fight. Things only got worse from there. But apparently this complete other girl was also pregnant by Nami's man. And Nami was not having it. Since Nami got expelled because she beat up that other girl so bad, she pulled up to this new girl's house. This is where things get insane. Like for part three. Part three of how two girls in my school were pregnant by the same guy. So like I said, Nami got word that this other girl was pregnant by her boyfriend too. She pulled up to this girl's house and whooped her ass too. That girl didn't lose her baby, but turns out it wasn't even Nami's boyfriend's baby. It was somebody else's baby. Hopefully that girl was okay. Everything was fine. Well, after that, Nami just like disappeared for a while. Everyone was confused. We were like, where the fuck is Nami? She talks shit every single day. People even got a hold of her friends and her friends didn't know where she was at either. She wasn't posting on social media. Literally nobody was in contact with her she just went ghost well eventually apparently she had a fallout with her best friend and her best friend felt that she was done dirty by nami so she took it upon herself to start spilling some tea on her instagram story she let everybody know why nami went ghost she said nami told all of her friends to keep this a secret she wasn't going to keep it a secret no more because that ain't her friend no more she said nami was too embarrassed to come back to social media because she had gotten into a car crash and lost her baby Story time of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man when I was 14, but most people from my country, it is called arranged marriage, and it happened to a lot of girls. My family was poor, but the guy I was marrying had a lot of money and promised to take care of me and my family. He also had a six year old son, but he didn't like me. I had met him once before when my mother introduced him to us. She allowed me to stay with him alone. He was very touchy. He told me I was very beautiful and would spoil me because pretty girls like me deserve pretty things. After he left, I told my parents that I was scared to marry him and that I'll do more housework and I'll take care of my other little sisters. My father yelled at me and told me no. So the next week, I went throughout the whole wedding crying. My mom told me to stop because I was messing up my makeup. After we had got married, a couple months later, he grew very abusive. Part two will be up next. This is part two of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. So we got married and a couple months into the relationship, he became abusive. Whenever my food tasted nasty or something wasn't clean right, he called me a lazy wife and told me I was no good and he should have married someone else. His six year old son had no respect for me. The little boy scratched me, would yell at me, throw stuff at me, and my husband wouldn't do anything about it. I would tell him that I didn't like how his son was treating me and he stood up and tells me to stay in my place and tells me I'm just a bad mother. I'd cried every night wishing I could go back home to my mother and father. Two years later when I turned 16 I found out I was pregnant. He was so happy about it and for once he treated me so sweet. He would cook for me, clean, and told his son to be nice because his little brother was in there. When we found out the baby was a girl, he got mad and walked out on me. Part three will be up next. This is part three of how my parents forced me to marry a 40 year old man and I was 14. So my husband was excited that I was pregnant, but when he found out I was having a baby girl, he got very upset and walked out of the room. When we got home, he started treating me nasty again. He then started putting his hands on me. He was just very angry at me and never wanted to see his daughter. It took him three weeks before picking her up. But even then, he wanted nothing to do with her. As years went on, I became quiet and I wouldn't speak to him. I would just make sure our home was clean and the children were taken care of. He would just get upset with me that I wouldn't speak to him and accuse me of cheating. He claimed that I was sleeping with other men and that our daughter is probably not even his child. I never understood why because I was always home because he didn't allow me to go out. But I soon realized he only accused me of cheating because he was cheating the entire time. Part 4 is coming up soon.
This is part four of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man and I was 14. My husband would always accuse me of cheating, but I found out he only accused me because he was cheating on me the entire time. Ended up finding out because his son told me. And like I said earlier, his son never liked me in the first place. So when I had made him upset, he randomly said, that's why my dad has a new woman. I was off about it, so I went to ask my husband about it and he admitted to it. He was very blunt about it, and he told me it was because the lady tempted him. I believed him at the time, but as time grew on, I started to become very insecure. I'd do whatever he want, but it was never good enough because he still kept stepping out of our marriage. On my 19th birthday is when I realized I had to figure out a way for me and my daughter to leave him. He didn't even say happy birthday to me, and that was my husband. I had no money. I didn't own anything, but I took a chance. So I packed whatever I could, and I planned for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. Part this is part five of how my parents forced me to marry a 40-year-old man, and I was 14. So like I said before, I made a plan for me and my daughter to run away while he went to work. When he left, I packed up food, clothes, and took money that we saved up just in case something happened. I woke my daughter up out of her sleep and I told her we need to go. I woke her son up and I told him we were going to the store and that we would be right back. He went right back to sleep and I gathered our things and took me and my daughter to the train station. She asked where we were going and I told her we were going to see our other family. When we got on the train, my daughter went to sleep and I cried because of all the pain I was put through with my husband. I left and I wasn't able to say goodbye to my mother, father, or any of my younger sisters. I didn't want any of them to know because I knew they were going to try to send me back. And leaving was the best decision that I made of my life. It's now been 23 years and I found my now husband and we're living a better life. And I bless God for allowing me to make this is a story time about the time I dated the school shooter. This might be a long story, so please bear with me. Before you form any opinions on anyone in the story, please wait all the way until the end. Trust me, you're gonna wanna listen to this story time. There was this boy who went to my school and he was really shy and he got bullied a lot. He got bullied a lot because he was a lot more feminine than other guys. And I'm just the type of person to give people the benefit of the doubt. So I went ahead and started talking to him more to see the type of person that he actually was. He didn't sit with anybody during lunch. So one day I went up to him and I sat down right next to him and I started talking to him. Immediately, I loved this boy, everything about him. He was extremely sweet and considerate and understanding and I knew that if other people took the time to get to know him, they would like him too. So we exchanged numbers and we started to FaceTime a lot. As we started to FaceTime more, I started to notice things that were a little off about him. Every single conversation that we had, he would always have to bring up about how much he hated this one boy in his tech class and how he would shoot up the school just to get rid of him, like for part two. This is part two about how I dated the school shooter. So let me backtrack a little bit from part one. After we exchanged numbers, we started to make plans to hang out outside of school and we just started talking more outside of school and eventually we started dating. He never really talked about this guy in his tech class until we started dating. Keep that in mind. For some reason, that guy in his tech class really bothered him. Like I said, he started talking about how he would shoot up the school just to get rid of this guy. At first I thought it was just a joke and he was just saying that until he kept saying it. He started being so serious about it and he started planning it out and exactly what he would do when he did it. That started to scare me and so I decided that I was gonna record one of these conversations, just in case. Well, during that conversation, he said he planned to shoot up the school the next day. He said, in these exact words, fuck it, you know what, I'm just gonna do it, tomorrow. Then he tells me to not come to school the next day. That's when I know that he was actually being serious. Immediately after I started writing up an email to the school like for part three. This is going to be part three of the time I dated the school shooter. So his exact plan was to use this new gun that his dad had just recently bought. And his exact goal was to get rid of that guy in his tech class. And his tech class was in the beginning of the school day. So after I wrote that email to the school about his plan and inserted the recording that I secretly took of him admitting to it, I realized that I had sent that email at around 12.05 a.m. Most of the time, the teachers don't ever email you back unless the school day has already started. That morning, for some reason, everything in my gut was telling me I sent the email too late. They're not going to open it in time. They're not going to see it in time my mom just thought that i was sick that day so i told her that i was gonna take a walk around the neighborhood and i totally forgot to mention that he lived in my neighborhood i told my mom i was going on a walk but i was actually going to his house to tell his parents by the time i got there his mom told me that the dad is driving him to school I told her his plan let her listen to the recording so she checked where the dad put the gun and it was not there so she called the dad to tell him to check his bag the dad said he had already dropped him off at school and he was halfway home his tech class was first period like for part four 
This is gonna be part four of the time I dated the school shooter. So let me do a little recap. So like I said, I ran to his house that morning to try to tell his parents his plan about shooting up the school and I showed them the recording for proof. Well, I was only able to tell the mom his plan because the dad had already taken him to school. She checked where this new gun he was planning on using was supposed to be and it wasn't there. Then when she called the dad to tell him to check their son's bag, the dad said one, the gun should still be there because he hadn't touched it since he put it away. And two, he had already dropped him off at school and he was halfway home. I didn't even tell my mama where I was going. I hopped in the car with my boyfriend's mom and we zoomed. The dad had taken a U-turn and he was speeding towards the school too. At this point, first period was about to start in five minutes. It was us against time. We were passing cars, running red lights. When we got to the school, the mom barely parked the car. The dad was already in there, I'm pretty sure. But as we were running inside, the dad was coming out with my boyfriend. This is what happened after, like for part five. This is going to be part five about the time I dated the school shooter. Like I said, my boyfriend's parents and I sped to the school and got there in time to stop him from carrying out his plan of shooting the school. I'm guessing the dad told them that there was like an emergency dentist appointment or something. Once they got in the car, the dad made my boyfriend open his bag and there was the gun. Child, the way my heart. You hear that? That's how fast my heart was beating at the time. It was so hard to believe that he actually brought that gun to school. Like he was actually going to carry out that plan. But from what I've seen, he was just so sweet and just does not seem like that type of guy at all. Mind you, his family was a very respected family in our neighborhood. They were super sweet. Everybody loved them. They just knew that the son was antisocial. After all this happened, I did not tell anybody about this. Like I'm a real bitch. I did not tell my best friends. I didn't tell my parents. I didn't tell nobody. Some time had passed and I hadn't talked to him. He wasn't coming to school and I was actually blocked on all socials. Even his parents blocked me. Went to his house multiple times, knocked on the door, nobody answered. Eventually someone told me that they moved, but I still had some unfinished business, like for part six. So this is gonna be me finishing the unfinished business. Like I said, him and his family moved. They didn't tell anybody anything. They just packed their stuff and they left. Everyone in the neighborhood was so confused. But I kept my mouth shut. Like I said, I'm a real bitch. I needed to find the answers as to why. Why did he want to get rid of that tech guy so bad? Well, well, well. So I went to tech first period just to see who was all in the classroom. I didn't actually go in the classroom. I was just standing outside the classroom. Based on where my ex was saying that he sat in the room, I figured out who the tech guy was. As soon as the bell rang for first period to be over, I ran to that tech class. I stopped that guy that my boyfriend was talking about. I told him everything. And that is when he admitted to me that one day, they were hanging out, mind you, this boy is a senior, my ex was a sophomore. They hooked up, but my ex was ashamed of what he did, so he threatened to say that he was taken advantage of. That boy said, well, I'm gonna tell people the truth then if you're gonna do that. So basically, my ex was embarrassed of his sexuality. Guessing after we started dating, he started to get super ashamed of what he did. And that's why he decided to shoot up the school. <laughs> This is he's like trying to dust the spiders off. I see my best friend start stripping. I was a little uh, about that, but I was like, fuck it. Anything to get these spiders off. Once we felt like we were good, we ran upstairs. My best friend started crying to me and apologizing and saying how much she hates her life and how she's so embarrassed. But I told her that all is good and this doesn't change the way that I see her at all. We have our little moment and then we sit down to eat again. And you know, I'm going in on my little SpaghettiOs. But all of a sudden, they start getting crunchy. I ignore it and I get down to the bottom of the bowl. When I look down, there is a half-eaten spider in the bottom of the bowl, like for part three. This is going to be part three of why I don't eat at other people's house anymore. Anymore. So like I said, I was munching and grunching on some SpaghettiOs. It's getting crunchy and I'm like, what's this crunch? Where's all this crunch coming from? I was like, bruh, it's probably some expired SpaghettiOs, but let me finish this bowl so my friend don't feel bad. And I got to the end and there was only some soup left. I saw a half eaten spider, the same spiders that we had seen downstairs. My body, it started vibrating. I was shaking. I seized out. I think I passed out. This was not a good situation. I did have a phobia of spiders. I told my best friend, listen, babes, I love you. You know I love you, but this cannot go on no longer. I'm gonna have to go home. I felt like such a terrible friend, but I did call my mom and she came to get me and she took me home. I told her what happened and she was upset with my friend's grandma. From then on, we only had sleepovers at my house. And ever since my family found out about her living situation, we would go over there sometimes to help them clean. We would bring food and games. I'm grown now, but me and this girl ended up falling out because of some drama. This story time is how I caught my boyfriend cheating on me with his sister. It was his stepsister, AKA they weren't related, but they still grew up together, which was still weird. So me and my boyfriend had been together for five years and I noticed him and his sister always had a close bond. They talk on the phone every day and to me, it's normal because that's his sister. But recently this year on his birthday is when I caught him cheating on me. So my boyfriend had spent time with his family early on in the day to celebrate and I told him I was gonna come over at night. 
but I lied because I was gonna come over early and surprise him. So I went out, I bought balloons, cake, and I even got a damn PS5. I pulled up to his place, and as I'm getting everything ready, he walks out of his place with a girl, then hugs and kisses her goodbye. And it wasn't a peck, they went in. And me, I'm like shook because I just went all out for his birthday. And when the girl turns around, it's his sister. Here's another toxic best friend story time and how I ended up having to fight her over her own boyfriend. So we're calling her Regina and at the time we just graduated college and that's where she met her boyfriend Kyle. They were together for a couple months but I never met him and as the story goes on you'll find out why. Five months into their relationship Valentine's Day is coming up and I wanted to do a double date. The 14th comes and she canceled on me last minute and she literally said word for word that she doesn't need her boyfriend being tempted to try to cheat on her on Valentine's Day. I didn't like that because she was implying that I would be the reason why he cheated. Anyways, a couple months later, I planned for us to do another double date for 4th of July. So we went to the beach and of course, we wore bathing suits. I wore a two-piece and she wore a one-piece with a skirt. When we get to the beach, I start to get undressed. She pulls me aside saying, why are you wearing that in front of my boyfriend? You look like a whore. Like for... Here's part two of how I ended up having to fight my toxic best friend over her own boyfriend. So, like I said before, we go to the beach, we start getting undressed, and my friend Regina pulls me aside saying, why would you wear that in front of my boyfriend? You look like a I get mad at her and tell her that we're at a freaking beach. What else do you expect me to wear? She starts talking about how I'm always trying to show off in front of guys that she brings around, and I tell her, my date is here also. Why would I do that in front of him or you? She tells me that I'm thirsty and that I'm looking for attention. I laugh because I'm like, she gotta be joking. Then out of nowhere, she takes my towel, throws it at me very hard as though she wanted to hurt me and says, put your clothes back on, you And guys, I crazy on this girl. Just know that at the end of the fight, she had a mouth full of sand in her mouth. And of course, the guys pulled us apart. She ended up packing all her things to go with her boyfriend. And I stayed at the beach and chilled all day. This is a story time of why I dropped out of high school on my first day. And when I say my first day, I mean my first day of freshman year. After this, I never went back. So like I said, it was the first day of freshman year and I have extreme anxiety. My anxiety is literally so, so bad. I literally get anxiety just by waking up in the morning. So I was super anxious for my first day of high school. I literally was running around the school. I could not find my classes. I walked into the wrong classroom several times. It was so embarrassing. But then I finally made it to my first class. I sat down in the front of the classroom. Bad idea. After running around the school and not being able to find my classes and walking into different classes that I wasn't supposed to be in, which was so embarrassing, my stomach was literally in my ass my stomach was literally bubbling because of my anxiety i felt so much pressure in my stomach i needed to let some out and you know i thought i could get away with it you know a little silent fart you know it was silent but it was not a fart I shit my pants. Then the teacher says we're gonna go around the classroom and everyone has to stand up and say one thing about ourselves. Starting with me since I was sitting at the front. Now this is what happened like for part two. This is part two of why I dropped out of high school my first day of freshman year. So like I said, I just shit myself in class. And the teacher says we have to go around the room and everyone has to stand up and say something about themselves. And of course, I had to be sitting in the front of the classroom and I had to go first. So I just told her I didn't feel comfortable standing up and I'd rather sit down. But she said that I had to stand up and everybody has to stand up. So I clearly did not have many options and I decided that I was gonna stand up. And so I stood up and everybody gasped, even the teacher. The teacher literally made everybody get out of the classroom and I knew from there on out I could not show my face in that school anymore. I knew all day everyone was gonna talk about that one kid that shit themselves in class. Yeah, the teacher took everyone out of the class and then I got myself cleaned up. Went to the office, told them what happened. They called my mom, they let me go home. I cried to my mom and told her I could not show my face at that school anymore. And so she pulled me out of high school and I just did online until I graduated. This is gonna be a story time of how I almost drowned someone's baby. Y'all, I cannot sleep at night because of this. I cannot believe that I did this to someone's child. But let me go ahead and explain myself. So I was babysitting for this one rich ass family. What's so amazing about it was the fact that the parents were never home. At the same time, I was just a senior in high school. I didn't have much to do after school either. I didn't have hobbies. I didn't play a sport. So I had all the time in the world to babysit for their kid and house sit for them. This baby was only one years old. Since the baby was so young, I had to keep eyes on it at all times. 
they had this big pool area and they said that if i ever wanted to go swimming i could and there was a floaty for the baby one day while i was house sitting and babysitting for them i went in the pool and i put the baby on the floaty thing somehow i forgot that, that baby existed i felt something in the bottom of my feet at the pool it was like slippery so i kicked it out the way because i thought it was a toy and then when i turn around me i see that the baby is not on the floaty i look down and i see this tiny human sunk in the water like for part two this is part two of how I almost drowned someone's baby. When this was happening, I was on my phone, so I was distracted. I looked down in the pool and I see that the baby is drowning. I don't really know how to explain the way that my heart skipped a beat at this exact moment. Like my heart was beating regularly and then all of a sudden it skipped two beats at a time. My ass was in my forehead. Immediately dived down into the pool. Took out the baby, but the baby was suffocating. Now listen, I never did CPR, but God blessed me with those skills in that very moment. I was able to keep myself calm and did CPR on the baby and was able to get it to breathe again. I did not tell nobody shit about this. I didn't tell the parents. The baby is fine. I really should have told the parents because what if it did cause a health issue but from what i've seen the baby's fine yeah i didn't tell them what happened but i quit babysitting because i felt guilty they haven't said anything about their baby dysfunctioning so the baby is fine just because of this i pulled myself out of babysitting and i'll never babysit ever again because i'm clearly not responsible enough this story time is how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole five thousand dollars out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with so i've been with my ex three years prior to breaking up we met at a party he seemed pretty cool and from there he was really nice and different from any guy i met any other guy i talked to didn't seem interested in me but him it was like he was obsessed with me he even said that he loved me after two weeks of talking i thought it was cute but i wasn't trying to get serious so soon he came off very strict of what he wanted and one of those things were me and after six months of meeting this great guy, he completely changed. He became physically and emotionally abusive. I even tried to leave at some points of the relationship. One day, he asked if I could spot him some gas money because he needed to pick up his mom's medicine. So I trusted my boyfriend of three years and gave him my card to take the money out the ATM. When he came back and gave me my card, he went ghost for two days. And of course, I was upset and I blew up his phone, afraid of what happened to him. When I checked my bank statement, it showed that he took out $5,000. If y'all want to know what happened after that, This is part two of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after he ghosted me for two days, I checked my bank account and my balance came up to $5,000 total. And it seemed like he went to different ATMs because he took a little amount and it all added up to $5,000. I was so upset, I tried calling and texting his friends, but my messages weren't going through. Almost like they blocked me. Then I went ahead and called his mom and luckily she picked up. I asked if she'd seen him and she said she just saw him today and that she thought we broke up i was like he told you we broke up and she said yes he even brought his girlfriend kayla over i was so furious she even told me that he helped her move into her new place and that he paid for her first and last month rent and it was near the mall in our area and i knew exactly what apartment complex she was talking about if y'all want to know what happened after that let me know down below in the comments This is part three of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after he lied and told everyone we broke up, I found out he was cheating on me with another girl and used the money I gave him to give her her first and last month rent. I knew exactly what apartment the girl lived in because his mom had told me. I went to the front desk and asked if there was a Kayla and I lied and said it was for a family emergency. So the guy at the front desk was able to reach her. She had came down, she walked to the desk and the guy at the desk pointed her towards me. I walked up to her and asked if she knew who I was, and she said no, and I broke everything down to her, telling her everything I were a boyfriend lied about. And she was so nice, she had no clue that any of this was going on. She even cried, but I told her to stop because I had a revenge plan and that he was going to get everything that was coming to him. And I asked if she wanted to join, and luckily she said yes. So if y'all want to know what happened after that, let me know down below in the comments, and this is when it gets juicy. This is part four of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after I met Kayla, the girl he was cheating on me with, we created the ultimate get back plan. So she had to completely act like she never met me. She told him she wanted to meet up and go on a surprise vacation and that she wanted to do something fun. And him being dumb, he agreed to it. She told him to pack a bag of his nicest clothes and bring his passport. He came to her place with all his things and they got in a car. I was on the floor in the back seat and he had no clue. 
So she drove really far from home and stopped by the gas station because she wanted to get frisky. She told him to take off his shoes. Him being dumb, he took off his shoes. She told him to get out of the car real quick because she needed to get the surprise from under the seat. And I popped up and he jumped back. Then I closed and locked the door. He was lost and got mad and started yelling at me, calling me all types of names. If y'all want to know what happened after that, please let me know down below in the comments. This is part five of how my toxic ex-boyfriend stole $5,000 out of my bank account to give to a girl he was cheating on me with. So after I popped up and surprised my ex, he was so shook he was not expecting it and I quickly closed the door. He banged on the door telling us to open it up and give him his things. I pulled down the window and tossed him five cents saying, have fun walking five hours home with the five cents that you should have had before cheating on me. And Kayla quickly drove off. It was funny because he had on no shoes. When we left, we took some of his Gucci outfits he broke, cut them up, and tossed them out the window. Some of the clothes we kept and sold them to people we knew, and his passport and wallet and cards and ID was tossed out the window too. After the whole situation was over, we went to Kayla's apartment. She gave me back the money that my ex stole from me, which was kind of hard to do, and we split the money that we made off of selling his clothes. And we're now friends. As for our ex, he could stay where we left him, the streets. I said I'd be sharing more stories of things that happened to me while I was younger that I've kept secret for my entire life and haven't told anybody, so here's another story. Fair warning, this video might be a little triggering. I was really, really young at the time. I don't exactly remember what age. I was around 8 or 13 years old. Me and my friends were going to this haunted maze and it was around Halloween time. It was one of my friend's parents that was taking us there and it was a group of 5 or 6 of my friends. While me and my friends were going through this maze, we were standing in a line and I was standing in the very back. So while we were walking, I ended up tripping on my shoelace and I fell to the side where there was curtains. It was the curtains where the workers would pop out and try to scare you. And I fell, I tried to yell for my friends, but because of the sound effects of the maze, they couldn't hear me. And by the time I got up, they were gone. So I started walking and I eventually got to a place where you could only go right or left. And I went left. And once I went left, I ended up in a circular room where there was five passageways. But there was also a group of teenage boys and I didn't even see them at first. All I know is I turned around and got grabbed, like for part two. This is part two of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. Like I said, I lost track of my friends and I was looking for my friends and I ended up in a part of the maze where there was all these guys that I didn't even see at first. All I know is I turned around and I got grabbed. So I screamed. I was super young at the time. I was defenseless. I didn't know what to do. Those guys seemed like they were around their teenage years and they were laughing and making a joke out of it. One of them was laughing and they told their friend, grab her legs. And so the friend grabbed my legs and they were tugging me and pulling me and then they started to pull my pants down panic was filling over my body i couldn't even scream when you're young you'd always think you know what to do at these moments but you really don't you just freeze up and that's exactly what i did i just froze up but thankfully as soon as i felt my pants starting to get pulled down another group of people turned the corner and that's when the boys dropped me and ran like for part three this is going to be part three of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. Like I said, another group of people started to turn the corner. That's when the boys dropped me and they ran. Those group of people didn't really get to see what was going on. So they asked me if I was okay. I told them that I was good. Me being super young and scared, I didn't really want to tell them what happened. My parents were also really iffy about me going out and I didn't want there to be a situation that would make them not trust me anymore. So they started to walk me out of the maze, you guys. And I'm guessing we were nearing towards the exit. But as we were nearing towards the exit, I completely forgot about the boys. I had realized that I didn't have a bracelet that I was wearing. Me being young and trying not to annoy the people that found me and were helping me get out of the maze, I wanted to turn around, but I didn't want to tell them that I needed to turn around because I lost something. So I ran back. As I was running back trying to find this bracelet in this maze, I had ran into the same group of teenage boys who assaulted me. Like for part four. This is gonna be part four of the time I got lost in a haunted maze. I had lost something in the maze and once I ran back to find it, I had ran into the same group of teenage boys who assaulted me. Like I said previously, I had completely forgotten about these boys. How did I forget about these boys? I'm not sure. I was very young, very dumb, and I wish I wasn't scared at the time to tell those people who were walking me out of the maze that I had lost something because I'm sure they would have been nice enough to help me find it. But I was scared. I didn't want to annoy them. So as soon as I saw those boys, I was thinking life or death. Why was I thinking life or death? 
I'm not sure, but that was my instinct. So I took it upon myself to do the dash and I ran and ran and ran and I did not look back. I didn't remember which way to go out of the maze, but I somehow did make it out. Thankfully, the Lord was really watching over me that day. And once I got out, I was screaming for my friends. I was screaming their names. I was looking for them everywhere. Eventually I found my friends and I just hugged one of them and started bawling. This story tells how I found out my boyfriend lied about his age. At the time, I was 15, and I found out he was 32. By the way, we're calling him Jake. So I met Jake at a college party, and I was able to go because my sister had just entered college, and I begged her to take me. So I had fun. I ended up meeting Jake, and from there, we started talking. He told me he was still in college, and of course, I told him I was still in high school. At the time, he told me he was 18, and he slightly looked older, but I guess he just looked older for his age. And I know we weren't supposed to date at these ages, but my dad was five years older than my mom, and I didn't think that it was that bad being three years apart. We were together for 10 months. When my birthday came around, he wanted to take me out on a date. He picked me up from home and drove me to a restaurant. And five minutes before we get to the restaurant, he gets pulled over for not having his lights on. The cops asked for his ID. He showed the cops and he put it down. I took a look at his ID and it said he was born in the 1980s. It gets really bad after this. Let me know if y'all want a part two. This is part two of how I found out my boyfriend lied about his age. At the time, I was 15, and I found out he was 32. So like I said earlier, he had got pulled over by the cops, and he asked for his ID. When he had got it back, he had put his ID in his cup order. I took a glance, and I saw he was born in the 1980s. When the cops left, we drove off. Then I asked him, Jake, how old are you again? He's like, 18. Why'd you ask that? I picked up his ID and pushed it into his face. He quickly steps on the brake and snatches it from me. I was like, take me home. He said, no, 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 it's a fake ID. I was like, what do you need a fake ID for? Where's your real one? He looked at me in shock. Then I told him I wanted to leave. I try to open up the car door to leave. and He tells me, you're not going nowhere. Guys, this is when it gets really scary. Y'all let me know if y'all want a part three. This is part three of how I found out my boyfriend lied about his age. At the time, I was 15, and I found out he was 32. Okay, so like I said before, I saw his ID, and I could tell he was lying about how it was fake. So I immediately wanted to get out. I tried to open up the door, but it doesn't open. I told him to let me out. He responds, you're not going anywhere, and you're not leaving me. I then start pushing on him to get me out. He stops and says, if you keep pushing on me, we're going to crash. So... I grabbed my phone and I called the police. He took my phone and threw it out the window. And I'm like, where the hell are you taking me? Guys, this is when it gets really dangerous. Y'all let me know if I should make a part four. This is part four of how I found out my boyfriend lied about his age. At the time, I was 15 and I found out he was 32. So I tried to call the cops and he took my phone and threw it out the window. I didn't know what else to do, so I just started throwing hands. And in the process, he ended up hitting the car in front of him. He created a big dent in the back of the car and the car in front stopped. And the guy in the car jumps out and starts yelling at Jake. I start waving my hand for help. He backs up and runs back to his car. I was confused at first and so I saw the police arrive five minutes later. So I guess he had called the police. When the police had got there, they had patted Jake down, the ex questions and investigated the whole car accident. They asked me questions about what happened and I told them. I ended up having to tell my parents we had to go to court. Jake, on the other hand, went to prison. The whole situation was weird and he lied throughout the entire relationship. After everything was over, I learned my lesson with guys like him. I now do background checks on any guy I date. This is why you should never trust your friend if they tell you that their pet don't bite. Charla Nash would go over to her friend's house, Sandra, every now and then to watch over her 200 pound chimpanzee. Charla knew straight off the bat that she did not like that chimpanzee because it always scared her. There was even a time where the chimpanzee jumped on Charla's back and ripped out a chunk of her hair. Charla started crying, but her friend Sandra thought it was funny. Sandra would not be laughing at anything that chimpanzee did much longer after this day. One day, Charla gets a call from Sandra saying her chimpanzee wouldn't go back in the cage and she needed some help. Charla drove over there to help her friend and immediately after, Sandra would have to call the police. By the time the police arrived, Charla was laying on the ground with half of her face eaten off, no jaw, her nose hanging from her face by a piece of her skin, and with both of her hands ripped off. This is what Charla looked like before her attack. Her entire face was mutilated after the attack, but since the photos are super graphic, they'll be posted on my Instagram story. Part 2 will include the unsettling phone call Sandra made to the police and how she described her friend getting eaten and ripped apart. This is going to be part two of why you should never trust your friend if they tell you that their pet don't bite. 
Sandra never imagined that after she called her friend over to help her put her 200 pound chimpanzee back in his cage since he wouldn't go in, she would have to make a phone call to the police and report how her chimpanzee ate her friend alive. This is the audio clip. Please! What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. With a police up! With a gun! With a gun! Hurry up! You have the gun. Please, hurry up! He's killing my girlfriend! What is the problem? He's killing my friend! Who's killing your friend? My chimpanzee! Oh, your chimpanzee is killing your friend. Yes! He ripped her apart! Hurry up! And she's dead. She's dead. Why, why are you saying that she's dead? She's dead. He ripped her apart. Charla actually ended up surviving. She was rushed to the hospital where they said she looked like she had gone through a meat grinder. Charla is very lucky to still be with us today. The most recent update about Charla is in her interview with Oprah that I have linked in my Instagram story. Story time about why my lunch lady always hated me in high school. I never thought this would happen to me. This story takes the biggest turn at the end. Okay, so it first started off as just my lunch lady eyeing me weird. Whenever I would enter the cafeteria or whenever I would pay for my food, she would always, always, always give me the weirdest look. And then sometimes she wouldn't even let me get lunch. She would say, oh, you don't have enough money on your account. When I knew the day before I just put money in. So then I wouldn't be able to eat lunch. And I reported her a couple times. Mind you, my mom works at the school. I even told my mom about it. She would just lie and be like, I never said she couldn't get her food. My mom told me that if she ever refused to let me get food again, to just come up to her classroom and then she'll give me something to eat. But I was so confused because my mom works at the school and I expected her to talk to administration about how the lunch lady is treating her daughter. But she didn't say anything to administration until one day. This time, I actually didn't have any money on my account and I did not know. Went to go get my lunch as usual. When I go to check out my food, the lunch lady throws her hands up, knocks my plate out of my hand. She says I'm just like my mom because we're both greedy. Like for part two, this is part two of why my lunch lady always hated me in high school. So like I said, this time I actually didn't have any money and I went to check out my food for lunch. The lunch lady knocks my plate over and says I'm just like my mom since we're both greedy. And I had no idea what she meant. Said she meant to throw her hands up, she didn't mean to knock over my plate. Everyone was looking at us and it was so awkward so I just walked away. And I didn't even sit down for lunch, I just walked out of the cafeteria and went straight to my mom's classroom. I had no idea what the lunch lady was talking about, my mom doesn't even talk to her. Or at least, I thought she didn't. So like I said, I was on the way to my mom's classroom after the lunch lady yelled at me in front of the whole entire cafeteria. And once I got to my mom's classroom, I told her exactly what happened. She was in the middle of class. When I tell you my mom stormed out of her class, went straight to the cafeteria, pulled up on the lunch lunch lady in front of everybody and she grabs her by her hair the lunch lady tried to grab to the cash register the cash register fell and money went everywhere all you could hear was the coins dropping on the floor like ka-ching ka-ching ka so close to jumping in but my mom had her other teachers had to come into the cafeteria to break them up and i got a time to like for part three okay so this is part three of why my lunch lady always hated me in high school like i said my mom dragged the lunch lady in front of everyone in the cafeteria some teachers came and pulled them apart they immediately fired my mom obviously my mom said forget this forget y'all and she took me and we both went home well on the way home she told me the beef with the lunch lady so apparently the lunch lady had been flirting with the history teacher and my mom and the history teacher were seeing each other on the low my mom was married so i was like so what about dad she said that my dad just didn't make her happy anymore but the problem with the lunch lady was the fact that all the teachers at my school are messy as fuck they all talk shit about each other they're always talking about another teacher and so basically all the staff knew just because of rumors and gossip that my mom and the history teacher were kind of seeing each other everyone knew including the lunch lady so once the lunch lady started flirting with the history teacher too they low-key started having tension with each other but it was unnecessary for the lunch lady to take out her anger on me so that's why she whooped her ass by the way this happened when i was in high school i am now graduated out of college and my parents are divorced now so this story time is how my boyfriend got my sister pregnant at the time i just graduated college and i moved into an apartment with my boyfriend my sister sister at the time was two years younger than me and she was still in college but she ended up dropping out because she said school wasn't for her anymore my parents were upset that they had paid for school and she dropped out in the middle of it so they kicked her out and me being the older sister i let her live with me and my boyfriend until she got back on her feet my sister was also depressed at the time but me and my boyfriend would always cheer her up as weeks went by she ended up getting a job at target and she helped pay for some of the bills towards the apartment one day when she gets back from work she comes into my room saying that she wasn't feeling well and just passed out she wasn't waking up so i took her to the hospital when we got to the hospital they told us that she was pregnant part two will be up soon this is part two on how my boyfriend got my sister pregnant so like i said earlier my sister passed out and i took her to the hospital and come to find out she was pregnant i was happy for her of course but she never told me she was seeing anyone when we got back home i asked her so who the baby daddy 
she jumps and she's just like, uh, some guy from school. I said, some guy got you pregnant? And I bust out laughing. She told me it wasn't funny. Then I asked, so who is he? She said, we don't talk no more and ran into her room. I let it go, but I noticed something was weird. Couple weeks later, one night my boyfriend leaves our room to go to my sister's. I get up and I listen on to the conversation and he's basically trying to convince her to get an abortion. So I walk into the room, very upset, and I ask him, why is he trying to convince her to get an abortion? And I notice he's giving her a stack of money. Part three. Part three of how my boyfriend got my sister pregnant. So I walked into my sister's room and my boyfriend is handing her a stack of money, telling her she should get an abortion. I start yelling, what are you doing? My boyfriend says he's just helping her out. I scream, why are you trying to have her get an abortion? Then my sister interrupts and says, we need to tell her. She looks at my boyfriend. I'm just like, what the fuck is going on? She tells my boyfriend, we got to tell her. I'm like, tell me what? My boyfriend says nothing. There's nothing to tell you. My sister just says straight up, the baby is his. I sit there for a second, and then out of nowhere, I just black out. I tagged him until my sister pulled me off. I went to our room. I packed up my things. I took my boyfriend's clothes, put them into a tub, poured bleach on them, grabbed my things, and left. A couple months later, my sister had the baby. It's now been two years, and I still haven't spoken to either my sister or my ex-boyfriend. time of why i'm terrified of ever babysitting again i started babysitting for this one family in the summer of 2019 i have my information for babysitting online so people contact me so the mom contacted me and said she wanted me to babysit for her three kids so we set up a time and schedule she gave me her address you know the use so when i got to her house she had already left like five minutes before i arrived and i see the kids sitting in the living room watching tv but then i see this man walking down the steps this man who i was assuming was the dad he asked me who i was and i said i was the babysitter and that i sorted things out with the mom if he wanted to make sure he could like call her well he told me that he was the dad and that he knew i was coming he just didn't expect me to come so early and so suddenly i was kind of confused as why they needed a babysitter if he was already there so i was like okay so he wouldn't be able to get into the house if it wasn't actually the dad so it has to be him well the mom texts me and says she's on her way home so i put the kids to sleep and then i go home half an hour later i get a text from the mom saying the kids are gone when i described that man i saw she said that sounded a lot like her ex-husband who has a spare key to their house part two of why I'm terrified of babysitting again. Like I said, when the mom came home after I left, she told me that the kids were gone. So I described to her the man that I saw in the house that I thought was the dad, and she told me that was the ex-husband who had a spare key to their house. But she did not believe me right away. At first, she was asking me a lot of questions, acting as if I was the one who kidnapped them. Almost as if she was accusing me of kidnapping. And you know what? Those feelings were right. Obviously, the police had to get involved, and when I spoke to them, they told me that the mom wanted to know if I knew where the kids were. And I had already told her about the man that I saw. But they said that they would also look into the ex-husband as well. So she kind of believed me, but didn't 100%. I was literally being accused of kidnapping three kids but they were looking more into me because her ex-husband lived in colorado we lived in kansas so i was a prime suspect up until they interviewed the dad and he gave himself up like for part three of why i'll never babysit again so like i said they were finally able to interview the dad but it took a while because he lived in a different state but when they interviewed him he mentioned this girlfriend that he had it was his current girlfriend and so they asked him where she lived and all that good stuff well the police decided that they were going to question the girlfriend as well so they went over to the girlfriend's house they knocked on the door and as soon as they knock on the door the police hear a child crying the dad didn't mention anything about his girlfriend having kids and the next thing you know a toddler runs up to the door a toddler that looks exactly like one of the kids that i was babysitting and so the police arrested the girlfriend and the police arrested the dad for kidnapping three children mom finally got her kids back and everything was good the kids were not harmed in any way this all happened in the span of like a week or two the mom actually ended up coming to me and personally apologizing about how she acted but i told her it was no biggie because anybody would act like that in a situation where their kids were gone and i continued to babysit her kids this story time was how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend but he's not my ex-boyfriend after everything he put me through also we're calling him marquan so back in 2017 is when me and marquan started talking he recently just got a relationship one month before he started talking to me 
Me, on the other hand, he was my first boyfriend. I'd always ask him if he still had feelings for her, but he always said that he didn't and that she cheated on him, which is why they split. I felt bad for him and wanted to comfort him through the time, but what he didn't tell me is that he was still talking to her behind my back. I wasn't the type of girl to go through phones, but I started to get suspicious. He'd always accuse me of cheating and was very insecure. I used to think he only felt that way because of his past relationship. But fast forward seven months into a relationship, I get a random text message asking if I knew Marquan had a girlfriend. And I was like, I am his girlfriend. And the never response, me and Marquan have been together for three years. After this, it gets real bad. Y'all let me know if y'all want a part two. This is part two of how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend. So I get a random text message and I'm going back and forth with the number and it tells me that they had been with my boyfriend Marquan for three years. I'm like, hold up, who are you? And she told me her name was Janaya and she sent pictures of her and Marquan together. I was just so upset and I was like, wow. Then I text her, I didn't even know that she existed. Now I'm guessing that she took that to offense and she was like, what ho, you're a nobody. And me, I'm trying not to start with her, but she's literally disrespecting me for no reason. And we was going at it, but I had to ignore her. The next day, I pull up to Marquand and I ask him, who was that? He was like, that's my ex. I don't know how she got your number. Just stuttering. I could just tell he was lying. I couldn't believe him. So I took my things from his place and I was trying to leave out. He was like, oh, baby, don't leave. While I was on my way out, there were like five girls pulling up to his crib also. This is when I was about to get jumped. This is part three of how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend. If y'all remember, like I said earlier, there were five girls that pulled up to his house. As they were getting closer, I noticed that one of the girls was the same girl that was texting me and how she and Marquand was together for three years. I asked him, why is Janaya here? She gets real defensive, start yelling at me, cursing me out, calling me all types of names. Y'all, literally out of nowhere, Marquand turns into a completely different person. He tells Janaya, baby, I don't know why she came to my house. It's like she's stalking me. I'm like, what? You was just begging me not to leave. He's like, I don't know what she's talking about. And runs over to Janiah. And guys, my mind is blown. I start laughing like, wow, you're a joke. And I try to walk off. And Janiah's just like, what you say to my man, ho? I completely ignore her and continue to walk. And before I notice, I'm getting yanked by my hair and girls are stomping on me. It gets worse after this. Should I make a part four? This is part four of how my toxic boyfriend had got me jumped by his ex-girlfriend. So like I said earlier, I walked away from him and out of nowhere, my hair gets yanked and I'm literally getting jumped. And before this, I've never been in a fight before because I never had to. I tried to get back at them, but it was five girls and little old me. This literally was the worst fight I've ever been in. And Marcon was just sitting there watching the girls jump me. It was so bad. I started crying, asking for help, but he just stood there. The girls took my clothes, my bag, my phone. They actually broke my phone and took the money out of my purse. After the fight was over, I was crying to get up. My lip was busted. I had two black eyes. It was hard to scream for help without crying. I couldn't move, so I just laid there in the streets for 20 minutes. Until one of Marquan's neighbors called the police. I was sent to the ambulance and I pressed charges against Marquan and the girls. I was so traumatized about the situation that I ended up getting therapy for it all. Oh my god. Story time before my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. By the way, we're calling her Alexis. So me and Alexis have been friends since we were babies. Our moms were best friends and they sent us to the same school, had the same friends and everything. But the thing with Alexis is that she was super jealous and insecure. Whenever I did anything without her, she get very controlling. We got to high school, we started to drift apart, and I made new friends. But, like after school, she'd always tell me that she didn't like my friends and that I'd be better off finding prettier friends. I would tell her, yeah, they might not be the most prettiest, but I like them. One day when I go to school, all of my friends are ignoring me and are giving me dirty looks. When I go to lunch, one of the most annoying boys walks up to me and tells me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. If you want to know what happened after that, let me know down below. This is part two for my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So, like I said before, this kid comes up to me telling me there's a rumor going around saying I was talking mad crazy about my friends and that they were planning on jumping me after school. And in my head, I'm like, so that's why nobody's talking to me? So I went to my best friend at the time, which 
started the whole mess and I didn't know. I asked her if she heard anything about this going around, about them wanting to jump me after school. She laughs at me and says, I should have kept my mouth shut. I get completely irritated because it's like now I don't have her support. After school comes and everybody quickly runs outside. Me, I'm stalling. I'm very slow at my locker. When I come outside, all of my friends are lined up and everyone gathered to see what's about to go down. I'm running out of time. Y'all let me know down below in the comments if y'all want a part three. This is part three from my toxic ex-best friend got me jumped. So like I said, I walk outside and everyone is gathered around. I walk up to one of them saying all the rumors that they heard aren't true. One of my friends said, you know what you said and pulled into my hair. And at that moment, I tried to swing back, but I just get jumped on. And they literally jumped me. After the whole thing was over, my best friend Alexis helped me. We went to her house and she cleaned me up and said that those girls were fake and that I should have listened to her earlier about not being friends with them. And I was confused on why she was helping me because she laughed in my face when I asked about it. But I left it alone because at least she was helping me and maybe she was right. Fast forward two weeks later, one of my friends who jumped me reached out to me apologizing. I asked her why and who even told you I was talking badly about you. Guys, believe it or not, after I get done speaking with her, I found out that my best friend Alexis lied and told them I was talking badly about them and the girl even sent fake screenshots of messages between me and her. Story time of the most dirtiest college roommate ever. By the way, we're calling her Jessie. So I moved in before Jessie and I get settled and decorate. The next day, she comes and throws her bag on the bed, then leaves. I thought it was weird because she didn't even say anything to me. Couple hours later, she comes back and I'm like, uh, hello. And she's like, my bed and comes gives me a hug. She smelled very bad. She starts unpacking all of her clothes and blankets, but they smell like mildew. Anyways, a week later, there's this party going on for freshmen, and she goes, but I stay in because I had a migraine. I told her that when she comes back, can she keep the light off? Now it's 2 a.m., and she comes back in very loud, uses the bathroom, then goes to sleep. And now I'm up, so I got up to use the bathroom too. When I sit down on the toilet, I feel something very squishy. It was dark because, like I said, I had a migraine. I get up, turn the light on, and I was sitting in her shit. Here's a story time on how my toxic ex-best friend got me arrested. And she's the reason why I'm banned from the only mall in our city. So in high school, I was friends with this girl, Destiny. And she was the type of friend I felt like I had to walk eggshells around. She was very cocky, but she was a thief. She always tried to get me to steal from a couple stores, but she said I was always too punk to do it. Just one day, she asked if I wanted to go to the mall with her, and I was like, yes, because I wasn't doing anything. We also ended up going to a clothing store. She asked me if I was tired of carrying my boot bag. I was like, yeah, a little. And she said that she would hold it for me so my back wouldn't hurt, and I thought it was very nice of her. We ended up separating for like three minutes in the store, and she tells me she can't find anything. She hands me back my bag because she said her shoulders were starting to hurt, and of course, I took the bag back. When we walked out of the store, we started beeping. I was confused on why because we never got anything. The workers asked us to see our bags, and when they opened up my bag, there was a $500 jacket stuffed in my book bag. This is why you should always mind your business, and this is also why I don't help people no more. Okay, so a little backstory. Everybody at my school was planning a brawl at this upcoming football game that the teachers didn't know about. It was a home game, so everybody was going. And I was not about to get my shit rocked or get my head stomped out, so I publicly announced I would bring water bottles just in case anybody gets thirsty mid-fight. And that was like a thing. Everybody was calling me the referee. Anyway, so I'm guessing everybody was on edge that day because tell me why I walk into geometry and I had to give a presentation that day. Like we all had groups to present with and while my group was up at the board presenting our project, I noticed this girl in my group who was wearing shorts. There was a white tag sticking out the bottom side of her shorts. Or at least I thought it was a white tag and I was just trying to help because tell me why when I pulled this white tag, her tampon came out, this girl turned around, she rocked my shit, bitch. Fight night started early. Cha, I was laying on the floor like, and of course, everybody found out about it and everybody was making fun of me because how I get my shit rocked before fight night. But to be fair, I guess it was more embarrassing for that girl because she did get her tampon pulled out in class because of me. So 